guys, Dirt here. Welcome back to another episode of Formers Friday. Now I know we talked about maybe doing some G1 Transformers, but we've got another Transformers Prime Beast Hunters, Optimus Prime, and we're gonna, ow, oh, ah, what is, ah, blow dart? Who would use a blow, oh. Enough is enough. I have had it with these monkey fighting Beast Hunter Optimus Primes on this Monday to Friday Transformer show. Now listen, we're gonna talk about some G1 today because I love G1 Transformers and I've had enough of all this other side stuff. Look, hop in the photo tent right now, let's take a look. What we have here today is Ultra Magnus. Now this is not just any Ultra Magnus, this is actually a special Ultra Magnus. Now what makes this Ultra Magnus so special? I'll tell you. Part of what makes this Ultra Magnus so special is that this is the KB Toys version of Ultra Magnus. This one is a little different than the one that you would have found on the shelves of your regular retailer back in the day. Now, you're gonna say, I'm looking at it, it looks like a regular Ultra Magnus. What makes this one so different? Well, I tell you what, let's take a look, first of all, at the cab. Now, cab, of course, looks like Optimus Prime. Just kind of looks like your standard, uh, whatever, uh, Optimus Prime figure that you have, except he's white. This was the base of Ultra Magnus. But if you look real close, you'll see that up here where I have the missile stored in the cab, there's actually no windshield. There's no piece of plastic there uh, in order to close off that area. That's not a factory defect, that's not a mistake, it didn't come out over the years. It's that KB Toys back in the day when they had their own version of uh, Ultra Magnus, they actually didn't put that piece of plastic in there. It was like a cost saving move and they could have their own kind of special version. It also doesn't have the rubberized tires. The tires are just a black plastic, a hard plastic, even though they look fine, uh, they still are a little bit cheaper overall. Also, there's one other thing that gives it away, if you've got one of these cabs you can take a look at, and that is when you transform him out, you'll find that the head on this version of Ultra Magnus is completely white. Now, if you bought a regular Ultra Magnus from some other retailer back in the day, you're going to find some blue accents on there, uh, you know, just to make it stand out and look a little different. But this one, because it is the uh, KB Toys version, it doesn't have any of that coloring on the head at all. But, you know, it's still this version of Optimus Prime. It's a white Optimus Prime that comes with this funky trailer. And you know, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, they made a new version of Optimus Prime, but no, it's Ultra Magnus, it's supposed to be something different. But technically, in Japan when they released it, it was a different version of Optimus Prime with this added armor. When they brought it to the US, they made him into his own character, and then, of course, KB Toys made their own variant that we're looking at here. Now, just to take a quick look at the rest of Ultra Magnus, I mean, you know what uh, Optimus Prime looks like, so turning him into the robot, you know, isn't any big deal. But if anyone out there happens to not know Ultra Magnus or haven't seen him before, this uh, trailer in the back actually becomes his battle armor. This version of Ultra Magnus that you see as Optimus Prime exists, but technically, as far as the story goes, this isn't really his robot form. And they've done some stuff in the comics uh, and things where they, you know, he becomes this version at one point or whatever, but technically, this is not Ultra Magnus. This is naked Magnus, maybe you could say, I don't know. Uh, but if we take the trailer here, uh, you can see it is, um, you know, just kind of like a big open piece. It's actually kind of like a car carrier uh, type piece. You can actually uh, open up these parts here and take the top part and angle it down. And because of the way that these pieces are angled here in the back, uh, it folds down like this with the idea being that if you were loading it up with cars to take cross country or whatever, uh, you would open it up like a ramp and the cars would drive up to the top. Then once the top is full, uh, it would close the rest of the way, and then you would have cars, whoa, sorry about that camera. You'd have cars pull in uh, to the bottom spot there. So it does, you know, have a 
uh, an actual purpose as a trailer that differentiates it from um, you know just being like this giant piece of battle armor uh, and, or being just another take on Prime's original uh, trailer piece that he carried with him. It's technically a car carrier and not a semi truck. Um, it does have let me pull this out here. The pieces that make Ultra Magnus special, uh, first of all, his gun, there really isn't a spot to put his gun, and I usually just kind of jam it in the uh, chest piece here. Uh, but technically, the uh, head of Ultra Magnus and the chest piece, the chest piece can become its own little flying car or jet or sled or whatever you want to call it with a person who sits in there and then it can fly around and do whatever save the universe uh, but you can take the head of ultra magnus here and actually using this giant groove in the head attach it and it becomes basically a gun cannon uh, so you can either use it like this as a flying weapon piece or when you put it on the uh, cab back there you can turn it around the other direction and attach it uh, slide it into place and it becomes basically a gun mount on the front of the cab here so it is powered up in that sense uh, you can see that it comes with this little connector piece for whatever reason it came with two and the purpose it serves is to be the trailer hitch so when you take this version and turn them into the cab it has a way to attach to the trailer and then this also uh, becomes a decorative piece when you put him in battle mode but for whatever reason the version that came with the KB toys and I'm, I'm not sure if this is true of all of them or not if just the KB toys but it came with two but at any given time, you're only really going to use one. So you got an extra one uh, just because. I mean, maybe they like you as far as that goes. Um, also, you've got the uh, guns at the top up here. And these uh, do actually shoot the missiles. We can get it. Oh, of course, mine's broken. Mine would break right now as we're recording. Let me try the other one. They were working yesterday. Oh, right on national TV. Thanks, buddy. We got to get you some inside or some Viagra because you're having uh, a little bit of stage fright. Okay, well, anyway, uh, they would shoot normally. There is a spring uh, release mechanism and they shoot actual missiles out of there. Uh, but interestingly enough, it came with the two missiles and then it came with two extra missiles. But there's really no place to put the two extra missiles. So as you saw in the beginning of the video, I just stuck them up there in the cab uh, just because I didn't want to lose them. Uh, but they really don't have a spot to go otherwise in the uh, transformation system. Now, if we take this cab piece, uh, take the, the top parts and just kind of break them apart, they become the arms for Ultra Magnus. Uh, and if we take the... Uh, back pieces in the back fold those up they become the feet of ultra magnus and you can resize the arms however you want push them up push them down uh, doesn't really matter um, but you do have your hands uh, inside here and these move uh, a little bit you can take the hands off Maybe, if you're stronger than I am, because I'm apparently very, very weak today. Uh, uh, you can take them out, and this kind of moves a little bit. Oh my gosh, what did I do? There we go, finally! Okay. Oh, yeah. um, so you can see that it actually extends out very long. Um, or you can push it back up. Um, but anyway, you can hide that little piece, uh, connector piece, where the giant fist goes in there. Um, but I just like to leave the hand in there. It's a good place for it. Keeps it kind of out of the way. Um, and then when I want to transform them, I just kind of twist it out. Uh, so there you go with that. Our connector piece that we use for the hitch uh, goes right there across his... Uh, waist there so it's kind of like a little belt with a little I don't know why he's got like a little robot gina there but I mean whatever uh, it's fine and you take your ultra magnus 
Optimus Prime cab, and you remove the hands, uh, and then you fold them back in to place so that you're kind of uh, in this mode, and you're gonna take these uh, where the normal hands would go, and there's actually little spots in there where you connect them in order to stick Ultra Magnus into his battle armor. Um, so then once he's stuck in place, you take the uh, chest piece, little uh, rocket pack jet thing, and you stick it on there, and then you take the head and throw it on there. You give him his gun, ladies and gentlemen, we have the super armored Optimus Prime in America known as Ultra Magnus. Now, the guns that I showed earlier that are supposed to shoot, and I can't get them to shoot, but they are supposed to, uh, those can come up here and you can attach them onto his shoulders. Um, you can put it, kind of set it in his hand if you want to, and it becomes like a secondary gun. Uh, there are different ways that you can attach it uh, to him so that he can have more guns there. Um, you know, or if you want, obviously you can just go ahead and stick them back on the top, uh, and then he can have them sit up there. Um, for the most part, Ultra Magnus himself, once he's in this robot mode, there's not a whole lot he can do. Um, you put the cab on him, uh, his legs are, you know, hidden in the back here, and this bottom part becomes his legs. His legs don't actually move. Uh, they still have the wheels, and this being the KB version, of course, non-rubberized wheels. They're just big, uh, thick chunks of plastic. There is a little wheel, wheel here, and there are two little round parts. Uh, these don't actually spin. I don't know if they ever did, if they were ever supposed to uh, or not, but they are rounded, so they at least help it slide. Uh, and you can slide him around, roll him around into place, uh, but he doesn't actually... Uh, walk so you can't pose him the only way that you can really pose him is with the arms uh, The arms can be moved around somewhat in order to change uh, His pose a little bit uh, But for the most part, that's it. Uh, he, he's just The big robot in the armor. It's more like he's there to to scare people than really do anything but you know as transformers go he is really cool looking and if you at least you know want one uh, especially kind of a uh, a new version of optimus prime that you want to stick on your shelf you know and have a nice looking piece there i mean that guy looks pretty good looks pretty cool and you throw them on your shelf, you have a nice looking version of a variant Optimus Prime that you can throw up there. Um, of course, again, once he's transformed, you've got these random leftover parts uh, that really have no uh, spot. You could uh, put the uh, hands back in the cab and kind of store them up there the way you always did with regular Optimus Prime. Uh, you've got these two extra little missiles that you could kind of Maybe throw up here, give him some uh, little bit of action like the Fimbots in uh, Austin Powers. Maybe he's got some of that going on. Uh, and then you've got this extra cod piece, um, which, I mean, I don't know. Can you, there's not really any place to put it. I guess maybe we can stick it on the smokestacks and at least just kind of get it out of the way back there. But, woo, look, there we go. So... Ultra Magnus overall is really a neat figure in concept, but he may not be the coolest when it actually comes to playing with him. Although I think if you're 12 years old and it's, you know, 1986 or whatever, and you happen to be looking at one of these and uh, trying to decide if you want to throw it on your shelf, it's kind of a no brainer because he's so big and so cool and menacing looking when he turns into the giant robot, you're going to want to have him. And even if you're not too sold on the fact that you're going to have this uh, giant battle armor robot, if nothing else, the idea of taking Optimus Prime and getting this alternate version of him, this uh, colored variant of Optimus Prime, I love that idea. Uh, even though he's being recycled as another toy, if they took the white Optimus Prime uh, and just released him as a another color variant, I'd be just as happy with that as well. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, that gun doesn't fit in the little hand. Uh, anyway, uh, so there you go. 
Ultra Magnus with your little Optimus Prime you can play with outside of that. And yes, I will admit that uh, if we couldn't find Optimus Prime, Ultra Magnus was a uh, fairly regular stand-in for him. You would just uh, pretend he was Optimus Prime and not really say anything else about it and just kind of leave it at that. But when it comes to Generation 1 Transformers, and even if you have a guy like Ultra Magnus, uh, I, I can't imagine that if he were to come out, if Transformers were to start with the fans and toy, uh, toy collecting today, how many complaints there'd be? Oh, he's just a repaint. Oh, they're reusing the same body type. Oh, you have to take a, a second head and put it on to, to make him a new character, to make him someone different. I mean, give me a break, guys. These are the same complaints we would hear today uh, with some of these characters. And yet, when we look back at the classic toys of yesteryear, they did the exact same thing and we loved it. We loved it and we still love it today. We look at Ultra Magnus and we think of Ultra Magnus as being one of the great characters of Generation 1. And he's a, he's a reuse, repaint uh, with some extra accessories to make him different. Uh, and as far as that goes, I love repaints. I love color variants. Uh, so therefore, to me, I love the idea of having Ultra Magnus as a standalone character. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, you know, maybe next week, regular dirt will be back. Maybe it'll be me. If it's me, you know we're going to be talking G1. If it's him, we're going to be talking about other stuff. So you can kind of keep that in mind going forward in future episodes. If you're looking for the G1 stuff, look for my beautiful face hidden behind this mask. If you just don't care, you want to see everything, then whatever, look for that uh, big, ugly guy. But thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, go to popculturenetwork.com. Check out more reviews, more videos, uh, stuff about comic books, video games, etc., etc. If you want to find me on Twitter, you can use uh, that guy's Twitter handle and also read his messages. It's at PCN underscore dirt. You can call our 24-hour voicemail line. It's area code 217-953-4025. And you can go to jointheforums.com, the official forums of the Pop Culture Network. You can tell everybody uh, how stupid they are for hating on repaints, uh, redecos, reuses of old characters because sometimes you get stuff that's really awesome like Ultra Magnus. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.